cooking for him. Cooking was just one activity T.J. Quinnell enjoyed. There were many more. One skill, or rather aptitude I have, is a special relationship with animals. They all like me a lot. This bright 15-year-old boy was an honor student at North Monterey County High School. Just a few merit badges away from Eagle Scout. I'll do my best to do my duty to God and my country. And a fit and active drug-free team. TJ was above average in every way. He was an incredibly vital young man. In his freshman uh, careers choices class, he analyzed his uh, goals and expectations in terms of what kind of a lifestyle he wanted to lead and concluded that he needed to be the president of his own computer company in order to lead the lifestyle that he was looking for. So I think that was his, uh, one of his aims. He would talked about attending MIT. He talked about spending his senior year in Japan as an exchange student because he had a lot of interest in the Japanese culture. He was very ambitious. There were, and there were a lot of things that he probably would have been very successful at. But TJ's bright future dimmed on February 15, 2001, when during his PE class, he suffered sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, the class was running sprints. So they were running uh, the length of the football field and then up the bleachers to the PE teacher. Uh, the, she was having them run in pairs. TJ was in the first pair to run. He ran his sprint got his time, was walking back along the bleachers to return to the starting point. The teacher was preparing for the next pair of students to run when she heard a commotion and turned in time to see TJ falling to the ground with the other student um, you know, grabbing his arm and basically breaking his fall. TJ now, the official term is persisting vegetative coma more colloquial way of putting it, lights on, nobody home. His eyes are open, his gaze wanders from side to side. You make a sudden, a sharp sound, he will jump. When he is in pain, he will cry. There's no personality. There is no expression of joy. There is no interaction. In effect, he is almost totally lost to us. In some ways it would almost be better if he were dead because then we could mourn. But what we have instead is someone who's not there and yet there he is. On one hand you, you hope he's not inside trying to communicate, but then on the other hand you miss him. His behavior can best be described, I think, as very similar to a newborn. He has no body control. He cannot hold his head up. Um, but worse than a newborn, he cannot swallow. Uh, he, he can't laugh. He, yeah, he, he can't laugh. He doesn't smile. He doesn't look at you. TJ needs to be bathed once or twice a day. He needs to have his face and hands washed regularly. He needs to have all of his muscles exercised two or three times a day so that they don't atrophy. Everything needs to be done for him. He must be rolled so that he doesn't develop sores and pressure points every couple of hours. He needs to um, have all of his cleaning and care done for him his feedings. He has a huge regimen of medications that he needs. In terms of our daily life, we are fortunate that TJ has two households. Uh, our household here and his mother's household in Ben Lomond. And so the two households are able to trade off his care rather than it being a 24-hour care in one place. He is fed four times a day uh, through a G-tube. Um, his uh, urine needs to be collected and disposed of. Virtually every body function, uh, with the exception of breathing, needs assistance. Everything needs to be done for him. 
It's taken my life and put away the old life and I have started a new life. Everything that I had worked for, all of my savings, um, all of the stability that I'd built for my family vanished that night. It was like moving into an alternate reality. Normal life certainly comes to a complete halt. Um, mowing the grass, weeding the garden, planting the garden, uh, sweeping the dust bunnies out from underneath the couch, uh, washing, Grocery shopping. washing the dishes, <laughs> you know, doing the laundry, any of those sorts of things becomes a major challenge to try to work that into your day. It's impacted me very deeply. I have like, like a missing piece inside that, that I can't ever seem to place. <laughs> I can't ever seem to fill up the empty spot. I still can't really believe that, that this happened to TJ. Um, I'm still waiting for him to come home from school. I probably always will. His ex life expectancy is five to seven years, and he's lived nearly four of those since the accident. On the other hand, it's also possible with care, and we provide him the best care that we possibly can, that, and he hasn't had a respiratory infection or a bed sore in four years, it's possible he could outlive us. He could live 30 years, 40 years. I believe that if there had been a defibrillator out there with that glass, or even back in the nurse's office, TJ would be fine now. He would be with his friends and his girlfriend. He would be off to college. Um, it's, it was estimated that it will cost $10 million to take care of TJ for his care. An, an AED costs 2000 The one wish that I would have for all of this is that the pain and, and anguish that we have gone through yep. can help serve to put these units into the schools so that no other parent will have to do it again. It's important that we give the schools the tools that they need to help save and protect our children. They are such simple, easy devices, and they can mean the difference between a whole healthy person and a family in ruins. Uh, TJ was given an assignment in school to uh, to be blindfolded for a time and learn what it was like to be blind. So this is what he wrote. Mm. Walking around blind is quite an eye-opening experience, if you'll excuse the pun. I thought about whether it would be better to be born blind or to become blind later in life. If you were able to see before, you would feel like you were losing a great treasure. If you were blind from birth, you would not know what you were missing. I have a new respect for the blind. Being blind requires a lot of determination, even stubbornness. You must not give up, or you will die. It's like what Miss Sullivan said, giving up is my idea of the original sin. I too shall not give up. In this class, or in my life. Quite a guy. Quite a guy. And I miss him. <laughs>